having some electrical work done for your next heating and air installation. In this video, we're gonna talk about six tips that I have to help you avoid some of the problems I've seen others make when they're dealing with the electrical and their heating and air system. Number one, hire an actual electrician. And I mean somebody that this is what they do. This is what they do every day. They're licensed and insured. They don't have a profession that's close to being an electrician and they think they know how to do it because it's not that hard to them, not that big a deal. Every time I've seen someone break that rule, there's an issue. Something's not right, something's not up to code, and in some cases, something is a safety issue. Even if you think you're dealing with someone that knows what they're doing, if they're not a licensed and insured electrician, in my opinion, you're making a mistake. Number two, pay attention to if you are replacing your heating and air system, the new equipment may have a different, what we call max fuse amps or some verbiage close to that. Basically what they're saying is this is the absolute maximum that your protection can be, whether your breaker can be, that your fuses can be, whatever the case is. A lot of times when people upgrade their equipment, they don't realize that number may change and you need to be aware of that. In the old days, you might be able to fudge that a little bit, but newer codes say whatever that number is, you can't go above that. Of course, your area may be different. I'm going off of current national electric codes. Some states may not have adopted that yet. Check with your local electrician and just make sure everything's being done right. Number three, don't skimp on the wire size. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. I've actually argued with some electricians over this. One of my requests, if you're having the new line pulled, go ahead and oversize the wire at least one size. Typically, if you see something on a double pole, 30 amp breaker, they might run 10 gauge wire. I'll go ahead and ask the electrician, go ahead and pull number eight wire. You just never know what the future holds. Let's just be mindful of that. And there's also things to consider like derating the wire. You wouldn't believe how many folks don't even know what that is. Maybe you're watching this and you don't know what that is, but your average electrician should know how to derate wire and make sure everything is sized right. The moral of the story is you can oversize the breaker that that system is fed by. In theory, you can't oversize the wire. The wire can be too big, it just can't be too small. Then you're creating a fire hazard. Number four, I would say that 90% of the stuff that we're dealing with with heating and air, whether it's the equipment, the accessories, whatever is being fed by electrical, I personally like everything to be on a designated circuit. And I know sometimes that's easier said than done, but I mean everything down to the humidifier, down to the receptacle beside the outdoor unit, if you have one out there. I want everything to be on a designated circuit. Some codes are even requiring that these days. I have seen folks break that rule before. We had a furnace a few years ago. We were just beating our head against the wall, had a bunch of issues. One of the things we ended up finding out is the furnace was not on a designated circuit, which was creating some of these issues. So ultimately, the equipment itself, any accessories, anything that you're being fed with electrical, it's not like lights in your home where you can have 10 different lights, four different fixtures, four different rooms, whatever, all on one breaker. I would wanna see all of these components have a designated circuit for that equipment or accessory alone. Number five, one thing I like to request from the electrician if I get a vote at all in the matter is I like for them to go ahead and pull power, have a receptacle by the indoor and outdoor units for proper future maintenance. It's just nice having power there. You don't have to stretch a cord. You know everything's being done right. So whether it's you have to plug in a vacuum pump at the outdoor unit or plug in a shop vac at the indoor unit, whatever you're doing, it's just nice to go ahead and get that out of the way, request it, it's done. It makes things a lot easier in the future. So especially if I have an electrician already pulling power to say the outdoor unit, I'll go ahead and request that as long as the homeowner's okay with it. That's actually something I've requested for years and I think some codes are finally catching up to it. I'm not the only one. I've bumped into other heating and air guys that would request that, but now you're seeing codes being adopted that require that from the get-go. And finally, number six, don't let your electrician touch the heating and air equipment. And this might be just something simple. An electrician might see this and say, you're crazy. I have seen issues, and I'll tell you a story in just a moment of something that was crazy that happened. Step one was hire an actual electrician to install everything from the panel to the disconnect at the indoor or outdoor unit. 
But then after that, after that disconnect, I think you should have a, your heating and air professional take care of everything after that. And that way, number one, no one can point fingers. So everything's getting done like it should, and hopefully no corners are being cut. But number two, if there were to be an issue, you know who you can go to and say, hey, look, this wasn't done right. Ultimately, when I have an electrician pull us line voltage wiring to something, I will tell them, hey, you know, you can just pull the wire and I'll set the disconnect or you can set the disconnect. Doesn't matter to me, but after that disconnect, everything's mine. Don't, don't touch my equipment. The story I wanted to tell you is a few years ago, we had a customer in one of the local towns here near us, Deltaville. A lady had a unit that actually had caught on fire inside of the air handler. And luckily the house didn't burn down. It wasn't, you know, that big a deal other than the odor it created in the house. But when we popped the cover off of that air handler, it looked like a fire inside of that unit had burned everything up. I mean, everything was black and singed. So anyway, I started doing some homework and I found that the wire going to the air handler was fed by a breaker way oversized. They had actually had a sub panel set near the air handler and then they came off of that sub panel with a 100 amp double pole breaker and then they got over to the air handler. They took the two circuits that the heat kit required and piggybacked them inside. Huge no-no, you can't do that. You're not actually protecting that equipment. There's a reason why the equipment is asking for a designated 60 amp circuit and then possibly a 30 amp circuit. You can't just combine those, have it fed by a 90 amp breaker. You have to protect that equipment for the size that it's requiring. The crazy thing with that was the homeowner remembered who the heating and air company was years ago and went out of her way to just go ahead and contact them about the issue that we had found. They, of course, blamed it on the electrician, which I thought was odd to start with. Again, as I just alluded to, I would not want the electrician touching my stuff. Have the electrician set that panel, disconnect, whatever, and then everything after that I know is gonna be up to snuff and kosher, so that way this doesn't happen. Anyway, if you've had any issues or have any comments, please comment down below on your electrical problems or insights. Love to hear them. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.